Entertainment and Sports Network. It was a wild night last night in Texas as the Yankee offense got clicking. Yeah, that man again, Brett Gardner, went yard. And then Mark Teixeira back in the starting lineup. He hit a home run as well, but the Yankees barely held on, leading 12 to 11 in the ninth. Bases loaded, two outs, 3 2 count on Adrian Beltre. He flies out to Gardner, and the Yankees breathe a sigh of relief as they even up this series. It's time for the rubber game. It's time for baseball. As the Yes Network presents New York Yankees baseball. It's the New York Yankees against the Texas Rangers in the final game of a three-game set from Globe Life Park in Arlington, Texas. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Yankees baseball along with Ken Singleton. I'm Michael K. The Yankees, for the third time this year, put up double-digit runs, 12 to 11. They beat the Texas Rangers last night. And right in the middle of it, this guy was one of the hottest hitters in baseball, and that's Brett Gardner. Yeah, the weather's hot in here in Texas this time of year, but Brett Gardner's even hotter. In the opening game of the series, well, he connected not once but twice. This is the third inning, his first home run of the ball game. Next time up, both of these off you, Darvish, by the way, in the fifth, he went deep again. Last night, leading off the game, another home run, his third of the series. It's been more than the homers, though. He also has two doubles and two singles, seven hits in this series. Let's take it back to the All-Star break, which is 12 games hitting 317, four home runs, nine ribbies, 11 runs scored. He has 13 home runs in 103 games this season, and it's already a career high. Every home run he hits, he sets another mark. All right, let's look at tonight. Tonight's pitching matchup brought to you by People's United Bank. See what know-how can do. Hiroki Kuroda needs to give the Yankees length. Their bullpen is gas, and he'll go up against Colby Lewis of the Rangers, 6-8 and eight, with a 6.23 ERA. This is going to be the final game in Texas for Derek Jeter, and boy, is he going to be disappointed. He loves hitting in this ballpark. How much? We'll tell you in a couple of moments. Lineups, first pitch, baseball next, right here on Yes. Buick. Visit TriStateBuick.com for great lease offers by La Quinta Inns and Suites. Wake up on the bright side at La Quinta Inns and Suites. Book now at LQ.com. And by Honda. Get a great deal on a new car you'll love at the Honda Summer Clearance Event. Rubber game in this three-game set. Just a really neat ceremony, Kenny, honoring Derek Jeter's final game here. Uh, Michael Young came out. Pudge Rodriguez came out. They gave him $10,000 for his Turn 2 Foundation. They gave him a pair of boots with NY and Jeter on it. And then I think everybody was shocked, including Derek Jeter, mm -hmm. went out of the visiting dugout, came the former president of the United States, George W. Bush, who Jeter had told famously before Game 3 of 2001, throw from the mound and don't bounce the ball because they'll boo you. 
And Gina was visibly, visibly moved to have the president come there and present him with a picture of Jeter talking to him underneath these stands that day. And that was a great moment, Kenny. Everybody kind of gasped when the president walked out. Well, President Bush and his wife, Laura, enjoying the ball game tonight and seeing the uh, last appearance by Derek Jeter here at the Globe Live Park. It's going to be tough for other uh, yeah. other teams to match bringing a president out to meet Ooh. Derek, but that was, uh, it was a very cool moment by the Texas Rangers. Well, the Rangers have taken the field, so why don't we take a look at the Yankees' starting lineup, which is presented by Lexus. The left fielder is Brett Gardner. He'll lead off. The captain, the shortstop, Derek Jeter, bat second. Batting third, playing center field, Jacoby Ellsbury. Mark Teixeira is at first base. He'll clean up. The number five hitter, the DH, Carlos Beltran. Chase Headley at third base will bat sixth. Batting seventh, the catching, Francisco Cervelli. Zoilo Almonte gets to start in right field. He'll bat eighth. And giving Brian Roberts another day off at second. Second baseman, Brendan Ryan. Veteran on the mound for the Texas Rangers is Colby Lewis. He gets the start tonight. His record overall 6-8. and eight. This is his 19th start. He's 0-3 in his career against the Yankees. He lost to them July 24th at Yankee Stadium. There are the overall numbers. Let's check out the pitcher scatter report. Brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. How about this? Replacing Kuroda. When Hiroki Kuroda left Japan to come pitch for the Dodgers in 2007, the Hiroshima Carp, his former team, was looking for a pitcher. They signed Colby Lewis to take his place. Lewis held up his end of the bargain. He won 26 games in the two years he was in Japan, and he led the league in strikeouts in both years. Now to modern times. He was rocked by the Angels on July the 10th, gave up 13 runs in two and a third innings. That's tough to do. And you can see left-handed batters have given him all kinds of problems this year. They're hitting 383 against him. So the defense might have to do some work. Let's take a look at it. It's presented by Geico. Aducey, Martin, and Rios left to right in the outfield. Infield is Beltre Andrews. Odor, Aaron Cedia, that's third to first. Chirinos is behind the plate. And Kenny told you all about Colby Lewis on the mound. We're about ready for baseball here in Arlington, Texas. The weather has really cooperated. The first day was very hot, but yesterday and today, it's it's reasonably <laughs> bearable for a, uh, a late July night here in Arlington, Texas. Yankees coming at 55 and 51. Rangers are 42 and 65. Injuries have destroyed the Rangers' season, and injuries have not helped the Yankees either. But the Yankees are hanging in there in a battle for a playoff spot. Gardner's ready. Lewis is ready. Let's do it here in Texas. First pitch is off the glove of Chirinos, and we are underway. Home plate umpire is Ed Hickox. Pat Holberg is at first. Lance Barrett at second. The crew chief, Ron Culpa, is over at third. Well, Brett Garner's done a good job of driving himself home in this series. He's got three home runs in the series, as we told you, but he's now scored 67 runs this year. This is what he's done against the Rangers in six games this season. He's 8 for 11 in this series, 12 for his last 31. Grounded foul. The league leader in runs scored is Mike Trout of the Angels with 74. So Gardner's not far behind the pace setter in scoring runs in the American League. And he's on one of those rolls right now, Michael, that hitters just kind of dream about. Anytime a pitcher makes the slightest mistake, he's hitting it very, very hard. Colby Lewis is not overpowering. You can see the fastball there at 88. He relies on movement. He has to sink it, keep everything down if he can. If he gets the ball elevated, it's going to get hit. 383 for left-handed hitters against him. That's He's having problems with guys who hit like Gardner on this side of the plate. Fouled away. Yankees baseball available in Spanish by hitting the SAP button on your remote. SAP is brought to you by Infinity. Foul the way again. As I look at the outfield defense for the Texas Rangers, they're playing Gardner like a pull hitter with power. You can see Martin at center over towards the gap in the right center field. And Alex Rios fairly deep in right. Used to be they played Gardner around the other way to the left field. Well, now he's a power hit. Yeah, now he's uh, kind of changed his tune. The 2-2. Two -two. Driven deep to right field. Fair ball. It's another one. See ya. A deep drive into the seats in right. Brett Gardner's on fire. And the Yankees lead 1-0.
Another career high, number 14. This, this, like we said, he's on one of these streaks now. And it's like his teammates can't believe this. Derek Jeter gets a nice hand as he comes to the plate. We told you he likes hitting here. This is how much. In his last seven games here, 19 hits and 33 at-bats. That's 576. But I don't know if he likes it as much as Brett Gardner does. Yes, and Brett, the Yankees are leaving after the game tonight to hit for Boston in a day off. He might want to stay here on his day off. Oh, what a play by Lewis behind his back. Might have taken a base hit away from Jeter. One down. First two hitters, it's been very entertaining. A home run, and now this play by Colby Lewis. <laughs> Sticks out the glove, the ball goes in it, and the captain is robbed of a hit. Hand eye coordination. So from the hot to the not. Jacoby Ellsbury, one hit in his last 22 at bats. Average down to 279. Lewis deals. Fly ball, left field. A Ducey makes the play for the second out. He's, he's unbelievable. This. It must be such a great feeling being that hot. Well, he's the leading home run hitter for the Yankees in this month. He's, he's got seven. Well, so the next game he plays is going to be August. <laughs> and you have, would you think about flipping him in Ellsbury? Yeah. Ellsbury first, Jeter, uh, I should say uh, Gardner third. Joe was asked about that a couple weeks ago. He said, I, I don't think so, but I wouldn't rule anything out. Yeah. Huh? He's got six more home runs than Ellsbury. And the same amount of ribbies, 47. And the thing about it, uh, Gardner also leads leadoff hitters in the American League and runs batted in. But there's one at bat every game where he comes up with nobody on base if right. he's leading off. So it doesn't have a chance to drive in somebody unless he hits a home run. He's done it two nights in a row. How about this against Ellsbury, Kenny? We've not seen this all year. A guy who uses line to line. They have an extraordinary shift against him, and there's Gardner with the drive down the right field line. That was I I'd lost my train there watching the replay. Yeah. That was that was Teixeira yeah. why they shifted. Ellsbury had already flown out, so Mark Teixeira with a walk. You know, when a guy is that high, all the hitters want to be around him. You know, some of it might rub off on you. Here's another guy swinging the bat pretty well. Here's Beltron. Pitch outside. You can see what uh, Carlos has done in his last uh, five games. 421. Very similar sounding name in Beltre at third, Beltron at the plate. These two are tied on the all time RBI list 1,364 apiece. Next up with 1,365 is Hall of Famer Orlando Cepeda, who, like Beltron, is uh, from Puerto Rico. So they're getting up there with Hall of Fame names as far as their RBI totals are concerned. Line drive, base hit. Beltron's really been swinging a hot bat. Teixeira is going to go to third, and he will make it. So a single by Beltron, first and third with two men out. The Yankees have been kind of waiting on Beltron all year. He got off to a decent start, then the injuries started to pile up. He was out before the game today throwing a throwing program, trying to get his elbow back in shape so he can get back in the outfield. He's been limited to DH duty, but his bat is coming around. Lion shot's going to drive Teixeira all the way to third base. First of all, he has to hold up so he didn't get hit with the ball. 
Well, the Yankees hitting Colby Lewis very hard here in the first inning. The two hits, by the way, by left handed batters. Here's Chase Headley. And a strike. Headley's kind of made an immediate impact with the Yankees. He's had a hit in every game. All eight games he's played. Oh and two. That's what he's done with the Yankees. Ten for thirty. Three extra base hits. Four ribbies. And dating back to the Padres. Mm -hmm. He has an 11 game hitting streak. Remember when the trade was made Brian Cashman said this guy's been swinging a pretty hot bat of mm -hmm. late and that's the reason why the Yankees went out and got him. Look out. Well, last night the Yankee bats came alive 12 runs. One of the uh, rare nights that the bullpen didn't do the job. They gave up 11, but the Yankees still won. They don't have to be pretty. You just have to put them in the win column. Ooh, just missed. Yeah. Everybody took a step toward the Ranger dugout. But including uh, Colby Lewis. Thought he had call strike three. Chase Headley showing a good eye or maybe good fortune. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. Yankees up one nothing. Pitch. Three two. So that's going to release Beltron at first. You know, Ron Washington last night. We we said that Michael, you said in the opening, Yankees uh, scored ten runs or more for the third time this season. Mm -hmm. Ron Washington last night saw his team give up ten runs or more for the tenth time this mm. year. 3 2. Grounded foul. Almost picked off the manager. I think he might have got him. I think he got a piece of him. Yeah, he's a former infielder. Those hands might not be as quick as they used to be. I know mine aren't. Only at dinner time. <laughs> I think he did get him. Let's see. Look out, Wash. Got yeah. him on the hand. Yeah. All right, this is going to be Colby Lewis's 25th pitch of the inning. Again, the runner goes from first. Pitch outside, bases loaded. Chance for the Yankees to really do some damage and give Corota some breathing room, and here comes Mike Maddox. Well, just like the Yankees' bullpen, the Rangers' bullpen has been uh, worked pretty hard of late, in particular in last night's ball game. So they're looking for some length out of Colby Lewis and this is not the way you want to get started facing at least seven hitters here in the first inning. Shoulder and chest tap. That's, uh, <laughs> that's what he does. Now you've talked about we've talked about Beltran swinging a hot bat. We've talked about Gardner swinging a hot bat. Here's a player at the plate now. Swinging a hot uh, bat. Swinging a hot bat. Ten game hitting streak. And he's coming off a night off last night. He got a night off, so Batting average over 310 with his 10 game hitting streak. There's a strike. Cervelli thought it was too far inside. You know, a lot of hitters, when they take a call strike or one they don't agree with, they immediately look over at their bench for support. You saw it. <laughs> It happens to I used to do it myself. One one. Two and one. 
Yankees have a run on Brett Gardner's leadoff home run. Looking for more now. Bases loaded. Two men out. And Francisco Cervelli at the plate. Starting behind the plate as uh, just giving McCann a day off. Two one. Rounded sharply to Andrews. He goes the short Ooh. way, gets the force just barely, and that will do it. So Lewis only gives up the one run. One run, two hits, no errors, and three left. Gardner has been ridiculous in this series. Four home runs, two of them off Hugh Darvish, and one leading off this game. Yankees won. Rangers coming to bat. And they sent Hiroki Kuroda out to the mound with that one run. Let's take a look at the Rangers starting lineup that he'll face, presented by Chevrolet. Shinsu Chu, the DH, will lead off. Batting second, the shortstop, Elvis Andrews. Alex Rios in right field will hit third. Cleaning up third baseman, Adrian Beltre. Jim Adusi, left fielder, will bat fifth. Number six hitter at seven ribbies yesterday, the first baseman, J.P. Aaron Sebia. Leonis Martin in center field is going to bat seventh. Batting eighth and catching, Robinson Chirinos. And uh, Rugned Odor, the second baseman, will bat ninth. Corona with a one-run lead as he takes the mound here at the bottom of the first inning against the Texas Rangers. And here are the numbers. His record over 500 now with a win in his last start. Seven and six. To be start number 22 on the year. Opponents hitting 257 along with the rest of the numbers. Let's check out our pitcher scouting report. Brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. How low can you go? Now. Corona's been pitching well lately, and one reason because he's been keeping the ball down. When he misses out of the strike zone, it's usually low, and sometimes you can get hitters to chase with the slider and the splitter. Best against the American League West in his career, he's held Western Division teams in the American League to a 216 batting average. And the only team he has never beaten in the major leagues, the Detroit Tigers. His next start will be against the Tigers at the stadium. Let's check out the defense behind him, presented by Geico. You have Gardner in left, Ellsbury in center, and Almonte in right. In the infield, Headley, Cheater, Ryan, Teixeira third to first, Cervelli behind the plate, Corona on the mound. And he deals. Pitch outside, 1-0. Skyed the other way. And out of play. We've got to wish happy birthday to the commissioner oh. of baseball, Bud Selig, 80 years old today. Happy birthday, Bud. And uh, you know he's watching because he's, he's, other than the Brewers, I think he's secretly a, a Yankee fan. Well, he said his favorite player, was not Joe DiMaggio. Right. The yeah. first game he ever saw was at Yankee Stadium. Yeah. So happy birthday, Commissioner Selig. 2-1. Lined in the left center field. It's a base hit. So Chu with a leadoff single. Well, let's look at the game time weather presented by Bigelow T. 89 degrees, 48% humidity. The wind is 12 miles per hour. It's partly cloudy. And it is not bad for July in Texas. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, kid. I feel hotter today than I did on Monday. I think the humidity is a little higher. That's... That's what I think. I mean, you, I think we're still getting a break with 89 degrees. Absolutely. Here. Absolutely. We've been here when they've had spells of, a, you know, 30 days in a row over 100. 
Here's Elvis Andrews. And there's a strike. Andrews has been on somewhat of a hot streak lately. He's reached base 13 times in his last uh, 25 plate appearances. He had a three hit night last night. I mentioned this the other night, but Andrews is just 25 years old and he's already played more games at shortstop than anybody in Texas Ranger history. So he's uh, he might become one of the all time greats here in Texas. One one hot shot past the diving Headley and down the left field line. Gardner cuts the ball off chugging the third is Chew. They're waving him home and he will score to tie the game an RBI double for Elvis Andrews. It's one one. Yeah we told you Andrews has been hot. Gardner racing over to the corner to cut it off to try and keep Chu from scoring all the way from first. But uh, Chu is home and the game is tied. Two hitters and two hits for the Texas Rangers. There's Headley with the headlong dive and just out of his reach. Ball headed for the corner. Here comes Gardner to cut it off. And he, he stops it from getting to the wall but had a little trouble coming up with it. And the run scores. Not happy with himself. And there's a strike. This is the inning that Corota really hurts himself at the end of his appearances because he really has to find it in the first. And he ends up throwing a lot of pitches, yeah. sometimes getting into trouble, sometimes giving up runs, but building up the pitch count. Robbing Peter to pay Paul. So the pitches you throw now are pitches he can't throw in the eighth inning. And, you know, we mentioned this at the start, Kenny. He needs to give the Yankees length. Their bullpen yesterday showed fatigue, almost blew the game, and they need some nights off. Well, Kuroda did get a win in his last start against Toronto, but he went only five and two thirds. Right. The 0 2. There's a splitter. Couldn't get Rios to chase. Rios is another Texas hitter. Been swinging the bat well. He's got a five game hitting streak. Eight for 20 during that time. Jumped his average over to the 300 mark. But you can see in the home run department only four homers. And his name has been rumored in the uh, trade mill. Grounded to third. Headley. Makes the play at first as Andrews moves to third. Some good base running by Andrews to get the third with uh, one out on a play that uh, is going to force Headley to come to his left to cut the ball off in the hole. And by seeing, I, th I think only a left side of the infield player would realize I can advance on this. He watches, watches the play develop, moves over to third as Headley passes behind him. He knows Headley going to his left is the only one who can get it. Jeter was playing more towards the middle. And if Headley's moving left, there's nobody covering third. That's exactly right. Here's Adrian Beltre with a runner on third. Yankees have the infield halfway at shortstop in second. He takes a strike. He had a chance to win the game yesterday. And most of the Yankees agreed it would have been the toughest loss of the year. 3-2, mm -hmm. bases loaded. Roberts, Robertson having a lot of trouble with command, and he hits a long fly ball to left to end the game. He didn't quite get the good wood of the bat on the ball or else that would have been a grand slam to win. Here it is last night. Not quite maybe underneath it a bit too. You can see Gardner drifting back just in front of the warning track and there was your ball game and he knew he just missed it. Still a dangerous hitter. Fourth in the league in batting with that 321. At the All-Star break, he was the league's leading hitter. Grounded up the middle, a base hit. A 2-1 Rangers lead as Beltre picks up a ribby single. 
Now well, he told you Lewis that's not the start he wanted and certainly not the start that Kuroda wanted to give up the lead in the bottom of the first inning. The Rangers have three hits and four batters. And Beltre trying to reach out, just stroke it towards the middle, right by Kuroda and in the center field. He has himself his 58th run batted in, and he moves one ahead of Beltran on the all time list. And is now tied with Orlando Cepeda. Here's Jim Adusi. One and oh. One thing I've seen with these pitches in the first inning, you mentioned how Kuroda has to ease his way into a game. You know, sometimes struggles in the first inning, then pitches have been up this inning. They haven't been uh, around the knees or just diving below. That one's lined to left field. It's a base hit. As Beltre advances to second. Kenny, here's the Yankees' biggest fear. For two years now, as Larry Rothschild comes out, Hiroki Kuroda has his season go south in August. Let's just look at last year. Mm -hmm. He was 3 0 with a 0 0.55 in five starts last July. But from August through the end of the season, he was 1 7 with a 5.40. Joe's given him rest when he could, uh -huh. tried not to push his pitch count when he didn't have to. Is he going to? Struggle again if he struggles the Yankees are in trouble. Because yeah, they he's are. essentially their lead pitcher This is what Michael's talking about last two seasons with the Yankees late season slowdown First 25 2.96 the last date 4.44 that's in 2012 33 starts last year 32 starts Very good the first 24 2.33 that's excellent the last eight 6.56 and you can see also see the batting average against really goes up from about this point in the season. Well, it's 2 1, Texas. We're still in the bottom of the first. And here is the uh, the villain from last night, J.P. Aaron Seabee. A boy, did he put together a night. And a career high, seven runs batted in. Grand slam homer. Hit a couple of home runs in the game. He's got 70 career home runs going against the Yan uh, in the major leagues going back to his days with the Toronto Blue Jays. Twelve of them are against the Yankees. And his seven ribbies give him 16 RBI since the All-Star break. That's the most in Major League Baseball mm -hmm. for guys hitting 183. Popped up and out of play. This is last night. This is the right center. That one just barely made it. This one had a little more giddy up on it. Grand slam off Dellen Batances. And that prote uh, propelled the Rangers back into the ball game. The 0 2. Did he get a piece of it? Wait a minute now. Savelli didn't try and tag him. Well, he doesn't have to because there's a runner at first. That's a strikeout. Yep. He did not get a piece. We'll take a look. It's a splitter that dives. Yeah, he, he didn't touch it. Just a swing and a miss. Now we said the Yankee offense came in live last night. So did the Rangers, for that matter. In the five previous games between these two teams this year, they scored 24 runs. Last night they scored 23. <laughs> Twenty one pitches so far for Corota. Got 
got a piece 0 and 2. Yeah, so both pitchers of the. Been on the ropes in the first inning. The 0 2. Grounded softly up the first baseline. And to share let it roll, and it's a foul ball. Boy, he could have gone either way with that. He picked him up, he probably tags him out. But he let it roll, and if it had stayed fair, it would have been a base hit. Well, he made the decision to let it roll, roll, roll. But if he picks it up, charges it. Right there, he yeah, tags him. He tags him. He would have been out. And there's no guarantee you let it roll, roll, roll that it's going to go foul. It barely did just before the bag. Yeah, Martin last night uh, broken 0 for 19. The anti Brett Gardner. Now he's two for two since then. Yeah. The 0 2. Grounded foul. I'll tell you what, he's been flirting with that first baseline his whole at bat. This one got a piece of his foot. 25 pitches for Corona. As Cervelli goes out, give him a breather. A lot of ways to go here with an 0 2 count. They probably just want to we'll see if Cervelli gives a sign or not. Martin's still uh, walking that foul ball off. And Beltre's been down at second for quite a while. Sometimes a verbal sign in this situation is the best. You know, base runners have subtle ways of relaying what pitches might be to hitters. The 0 2. One and two. You know, when I was on second and there was a hitter up, depending on the, which side the catcher set up, I would put one hand on that knee. And some of the hitters would look. And that doesn't tell you what the pitch is going to be, but sometimes it can, depending on location. Missed outside. Trying to get the Martin to bite, he wouldn't do it the last two pitches. Served out the left field, long run for Gardner. He's not going to get there. It's going to be a base hit. Beltre scores. A Ducey stops at second. It's an RBI single for Martin, and it's 3-1 Texas. Well, that whole at bat, Martin was trying to pull the ball until the last pitch. Splitter, and he goes with it. He looked like he was just trying to foul that off and spoil it. He gets a bonus. He flips it out down the left field line. Long run for Gardner. It's going to die in front of him. And the Rangers have another run. Kenny, this is a nightmare scenario from Girardi. He, he cannot afford to have a pitcher give a one or two inning performance today. I mean, tomorrow's an off day, but yeah. the bullpen is really gassed. Here's Robinson Chirinos.
Kroot is going to go 30 pitches at least in this inning. And as you said, Michael, those are pitches you don't get to throw later on in the game. There's number 30. Plus, Kuroda is slowing things down, and the, sometimes when you do this and it takes a long inning, fielders start to relax behind you. It's not as if he's been going deep into counts, which can really make fielders relax. But he's given up three runs on five hits here in the first. Three and one. He's got a hitter up there now who's three for 34. But Chirinos, I would say, has uh, got the count his way. Three balls and a strike. Road has been struggling. Grounded softly to second. Brendan Ryan is there, and that will do it. 33 pitches and the Rangers score three runs on five hits and they leave two. We played one, it's 3 1 Texas. is the official hybrid vehicle of the Yankees. And here's the question. Will we ever see longevity out of a broadcaster like that of Vince Scully ever again? The answer, Yankee Classic 46. No, Scully is a one-of-a-kind broadcaster who has a deep history with his team. There will never be another like him. Now, that's all true. Uh -huh. But in order to do something like what Vince Scully's done, you've got to get a job right out of college. He went right from Fordham mm -hmm. to the booth in, in Brooklyn. And there he is in Brooklyn and move with the team to L.A., so you do the math. He's 20 years old, 66 years, makes him 86, and mm -hmm. thank God he's in great health, and everybody wins that he announced he's coming back next year. Yeah, you saw the excitement at Dodger Stadium. The Dodgers did it the right way. It was like a Hollywood production involving the players, the fans, and Vince Gully himself. Follow Yes Network and tweet us your responses using hashtag Yankees Prius to keep the conversation going. He's a very nice man, and obviously he's the best at what he does ever. 
and uh, every day that he continues to do baseball should be cherished and embraced by everyone who's a baseball fan. You know, I, I will say this about Vinny. I met him years ago when I was doing games in the National League, and he, he can't be a nicer guy. And plus the fact that, uh, you know, he's been around a, lo a long, long time. And uh, I can remember when I first broke into the big leagues with the Mets, and he came over and talked to me, and I thought, oh, wow, it, it's like somebody, one of these young players talking to you now, Michael. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so... That's that's the feeling I got because when I was very young, I saw him in Brooklyn doing game Dodger games. Because my dad had the Dodgers on TV. You know, we didn't do the game yesterday. Fox Sports One mm -hmm. did it. So when the announcement came down about Scully, I've got the Major League Baseball uh, MLB.com package, uh -huh. and I just listened to the Dodgers and the Braves, and <laughs> he's awesome. And I, he's he, he does such research that when he talked to me, when I first came up with the Mets, and I told him I had watched him on TV when I was little. Mm -hmm. So, back in those days, the fans at Dodger Stadium would bring transistor radios and listen to Scully as they're watching the game in the stadium. Fly ball down the left field line by Almonte, and a Ducey makes the catch. What a catch by Aducey. Would not have been a fair ball, but he turns what should have been a foul ball in the seats into an out. Looks like he's okay after the collision with the wall. And uh, if he were a right-handed fielder, I, I'm not so sure he would have been able to make this play. Leaps up, well, up over the wall, crashes the, into the padded wall, and hangs on. A tremendous play by Jim Aducey in left field. Hangs on to it after the collision. And Almonte is retired. So getting back to that story of Vince Scully, he, he talked to me, and uh, I mentioned to him I'd watched him on TV when I was young. So my first at bat, you know, he's giving information about me, and everybody started laughing in the stadium. I thought, you know, my pants were down, my fly was open or something. <laughs> but what he actually said was, Brendan Ryan pops one up foul. What he told the people that, that he's been broadcasting so long now that players of people who watched him when they were young are now playing in the major leagues it's, that, it's, that's that long ago and, and i'm watching the game yesterday and he, he's calling yasiel puig and d gordon i'm going this guy called plays with jackie robinson and roy campanella so i mean he's he's the thread through the fabric of baseball amazing oh nice play backhanded by beltre take an extra base hit away from ryan two away Take a look one more time at a Ducey's catch. We'll look at it on Yesmo, brought to you by your Mercedes-Benz Tri-State dealer. Yeah, we've had two good plays in a row by the Texas defense, but this is the first one. A Ducey into the wall, to the ground, and holds on. One down, and now there's two. You know what people don't understand, and you do, Kenny? Mm -hmm. There's padding there, but that hurts yeah. because there's something hard behind the padding. So the padding gives to a certain extent, but... It's, it stops. There's a there's a concrete wall behind that. Yeah, years ago, those those walls were not padded. When outfielders started making pretty good money, they started padding the walls to protect the players. Here's Brett Gardner, and it's time for the Jeep Hitter Scouting Report. Well, Brett Gardner, well, we're getting production at leadoff. We mentioned he has more runs batted in out of the leadoff spot than any other American League hitter. Seven home runs now here in the month of July, and he's been torn against Texas over 370 in his career against the Texas Rangers. Had a home run in the first, right down the line, deep down the line. The line at right. Count two and one. Eight for 11, two doubles, four home runs, and four runs batted in. Two and two. Yeah, Colby Lewis trying his best to keep the ball away. He tried to sneak a fastball in the first time, and Brett Gardner has been uh, very quick to that spot in this series.
Gardner works the count full. And Lewis deals. Strike three. Gardner down looking. So Lewis retires the side in order, and Gardner really pleading his case. He is really telling Ed Hickox that was not a strike. Joe Jordy out quickly to save his left fielder from getting thrown out of the game. We go to the bottom of the second inning. Texas three, and the Yankees one. Inspired medicine. Michael Pineda expected to make a rehab start on Sunday, 60 to 65 pitches, so that will start the 30 day rehab clock. He gets through that okay. The next outing would be 80 pitches, then the next outing would be 90, 95, and then he could get called up if everything goes well. Look what he did in the big leagues in his four starts. The Yankees could certainly use that infusion into the rotation. We'll see. Odor leads off the bottom of the second and takes a strike. Odor has opened some eyes since getting a chance. Just 20 years old, youngest player in the major leagues. We mentioned that the other night. But he leads uh, all rookies in triples with five. He's also hitting 10 of his last 14, and he's pretty sharp in the field. When uh, Ron Washington was a coach with the Oakland A's, he was a third base coach, but he was also the infield instructor and one of the best in the game. And wasn't it Eric Chavez who gave uh, yep. Ron Washington one of his gold gloves mm -hmm. that he won? And we found out today Eric Chavez re announced his retirement. There's a ground ball of first. Odor is out. One away. So it was uh, Chavez's way of uh, thanking Ron Washington for all the hard work that had turned him into a multi -glove, gold glove winner at third base. Well, when he was in Oakland, his players adored him. Oh. And he was, uh, uh, he lost his home in New Orleans. During Katrina, and uh, I believe that Jason Giambi mm -hmm. paid for the whole thing and replaced it. Here's Shinsu Chu. And there's a bunt right back to Kuroda. Two away. Not the best of bunts by Shinsu Chu, who. Uh, had a five game hitting streak broken last night. He picked it right up again tonight with a base hit in the first inning. He scored the first run of the game for Texas. Here's Elvis Andrus, who had an RBI double in the first inning. Driving in Chu. And a strike to Andrus. Uh, Andrews came to the Rangers from the minor leagues uh, with the Atlanta Braves. He was in that big trade for Mark Teixeira. 
to share had been the number one draft pick of the Rangers. And just before free agency they traded him to Atlanta. And they picked up the likes of Elvis Andrews. Jared Saltalamacchia. Nephi Perez and Matt Harrison in that, that was deal. some trade. It, it certainly was. Grounded to third Headley. And a nice bounce back inning for Corota as he retires the Rangers in order. One, two, three. We played two in Arlington. Three, one, Texas. to Boston when the Yankees and the Red Sox begin a three-game set at Fenway. Coverage starts at 6 with Audi batting practice today in the Tri-State Ford pregame. Only on, yes, it's going to be very interesting, Kenny, to see if John Lester starts that game for the Red Sox because he was skipped over today because of the trade deadline looming, and he's certainly been in a lot of trade discussions the Red Sox with other teams. Uh, if he's not traded, he'll start Friday against the Yankees. If he is traded, don't know who will start. Audi, 8-3 scoreboard, Texas 3-1 over the Yanks. Well, with him not starting, that tells you they're close to a deal with somebody. Whether they finally consummate it or not, they it kind of makes some sense. I, I think they realize the hometown discount he was going to give them is nothing like the hometown discount that Dustin Pedroia gave him. No, no. And he wants market value for a pitcher of his talent, and they just don't seem like they want to give it, so... They're far out of a playoff spot right now. Backhanded there by Andrews. The long throw and a nice scoop by Aaron Seabe to get Jeter. But that would be a shocker, Kenny. I mean, this is one of the stars in baseball. He's having a very good year. The, the record is so-so because the Red Sox record is so poor. Mm -hmm. But 2.52, way more than a strikeout per inning. Strikeout to walk ratio is amazing. This is a stud starter. And the team that he goes to, that could push them into a playoff spot. Yeah, well, a former World Series MVP, so you know he's a, a postseason veteran. And that's what these teams are hoping for if he joins their rotation. By the way, that was a nice play by Andrews there to throw out Jeter. That was the type of play that the Rangers were hoping for when they made that trade. <laughs> Ellsbury takes outside, 1-0. Oh. Ellsbury with a fly ball to left in the first. Just one hit in his last 23 at bats. He's very streaky this year. There are sometimes it, it looks like he can't get him out. And the beginning of the Yankee homestand. Off the break, he looked great like that. That one's driven deep to right center field. See ya. A home run for Jacoby Ellsbury. And it's 3-2 Texas. And just like that, Kenny, he'd go on a, on a streak. Now, that's how he hits. 
The Yankees have now hit two home runs in each of their last six games. They had a nine game stretch back in May of 2009, but six games in a row now, the Yankees have hit two home runs. The power is returning. Here's Mark Teixeira. 1 0. Of course, when Teixeira played here for the Rangers, we told you he was a former number one draft pick out of Georgia Tech. And the last couple of years, we're going to take a look at the home run for right there. It had the sound too, didn't it, Michael? Just mm -hmm. crack of the bat, you knew it was going far away. When Teixeira was here with Texas, couldn't get him out of the lineup. Two years in a row, he played every single game. 2005, 2006, 162 games both those seasons. He's been in and out of the lineup this year for the Yankees. Swing and a miss. To uh, he said something late last week that was really startling. He said. Father time is undefeated. I'm paraphrasing. I'm 34 years old, and I just can't play through injuries anymore. That's just the way it is. He's just 34. It's not like he's Methuselah. So he 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 thinks that the injuries just stop him from playing. Now this guy this is a guy who played every single day, as Kenny just said. And one of those years, well, both years he drove in 100 runs, but one year he had his best year, 144 runs batted in, 2005. That is major production. Count two and zero. Oh. Count goes to two and zero, oh and the Rangers shift. They think that Deltron is more apt to pull the ball on a two zero oh count. That was not a pitch to pull, so he took it. Let's check out the team home run leader since the uh, All-Star break. The Honda League leader showing the Yankees on top with 16. And that's what you're used to seeing, but yeah. the first half the homers just didn't come. Well, I, it's no surprise that the Orioles and Blue Jays are up there and even the Red Sox. All three of them play in some very homer-friendly parks. Uh, when you, you, I mean, all around the park. There's a base hit the other way for Beltran, who continues to rake. He is now 13 for his last 28. There might not be two better hitting parks in baseball than Camden Yards and the, the Rogers Center in Toronto. Beltran. The Rangers shifted thinking he would pull the ball. But you see Lewis. That one's kind of down the middle. You can do anything you want with that type of pitch. Maybe it was sinking and Beltran goes the other way. Folks he's starting to heat up. Average now up to 241. He was in the 220s for so long. Yeah, he's got a seven game hitting streak going. Headley fouls it away. Deep drive, right center field, Rios back on the track. He'll make the play right at the wall for the final out of the third. Headley flirting with a two-run home run that would have given the Yankees the lead. But Ellsbury's, it wasn't a flirt. He crushed it. His ninth home run of the year. When it lands, Yankees are only trailing by a score of 3-2. to two.
for the official paint of the New York Yankees by the 2014 Mazda 3 with seamless connectivity and by People's United Bank. See what know-how can do. Well, we go to the bottom of the third on the Audi A3 scoreboard. Texas 3, the Yankees 2. Corona gave up three runs in the, uh, the first inning and threw 33 pitches. He worked a 1-2-3 second inning and threw just nine pitches. So 42 over two. Now I'll face 3-4-5 in the Rangers' order. Here's Rios. A lot of rumors about Rios. A lot of teams need bats. Rios is a good hitter. He has a five-game hitting streak, hitting 304. Oop. And he gets plunked there. But you have to wonder, is anybody going to want to take on his contract, which is $13 million next year for a guy who doesn't hit home runs anymore? Can yeah, he just... Uh... Recall when he came up with the Blue Jays, he hit everything to the right side, and they were worried that he would never pull the ball. Then he started to, started to hit with the more authority, more power, but he hasn't had a home run in a hundred. He's had one home run in his last 62 games. Amazing. In this ballpark, half your games. Mm -hmm. That's not the way to start the inning here. Rios runs pretty well. Here's Beltre, RBI single in the first inning. Beltre was out with his little son. Oh. Kenny and I were here early and we're watching from up here. And he's got the kid out in right field. He's pitching to him. And the kid has the same swing as Beltre. Yeah. Goes down on one knee when he swings hard, just like Beltre. <laughs> and what he did was they were out in right field, kind of, in the, with the wall as the backdrop. And he had him just far enough that he would have to hit the ball pretty well to get into the seats right and his young son I couldn't we really think about nine years eight old, or nine eight or nine yeah he hit a few in the seats same stance everything as his dad His son, by the way, is Adrian Jr. How old does it say? Uh, he was born in uh, 06. Eight. Eight years old. High fly ball, right field. Almonte toward the line. Makes the play. El Monte getting some playing time in right field. He started last night, had a big hit for the Yankees in the game, and uh, starting again tonight as Itro gets another night off against a a pitcher who, in the past, Itro has hit well against. And I, I believe it's just uh, Joe Girardi's way of giving Itro an extra day and then a day off tomorrow. And maybe Itro will be back in the lineup on uh, Friday against the Boston Red Sox. Another thing about El Monte, though, when the Yankees called him up, he was swinging the bat pretty well down at Grant Wilkesbury. He had one game where he hit three home runs in one game. And the odd thing about it, the game had been suspended, and he had come back and finished the game, hit more home runs on the second day. Count one and zero to a Ducey who had a single to left in the first. So he hit two home runs in the first part of the game. He picked it up, and he hit another one the next day. Count one and one. A couple of home runs for the Yankees account for their offense. A leadoff home run 
by Brett Gardner and then a home run by Jacoby Ellsbury in the third. Well that means Almonte is going to have to hit one to complete the trifecta yep. in the outfield. Toronto continues its streaking ways as they're leading Boston six to one in the seventh inning at Fenway Park. It's all gone south for the Red Sox. Yeah, they traded Felix Dubron today. Yeah, they did. Grounded up the middle, Ryan flips the Jeter on to first. It's a double play. A four-six-three double play as Corona. Gets out of the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. And because of the DP, nobody left on base. Three in the books here in Texas. 3-2 Rangers. Six NY quits for free help today. In 2013, Alex Rios became the last Rangers player to hit for the cycle. Who's the only catcher to accomplish this feat with Texas? We'll find out. In the bottom of the inning. Bottom third of the Yankee order against Colby Lewis. And Cervelli swings and misses. Bottom of the seventh, Baltimore leads Seattle 4-3. Make sure that was Seattle. It's Baltimore, L.A., I'm sorry. Yeah, the Angels. Yeah, they played Seattle over the weekend in Seattle. Now the West Coast teams are coming through there. Mm -hmm. So Seattle is next into Camden. Right. Yards. One one. We thought that stretch would be tough for Baltimore on the West Coast. They won six of the ten games and gained ground. Yeah. Got a walk off for home run for Manny Machado last night. Kenny, they're one of the teams that are rumored to be in the hunt for Luster. Yeah. Whether or not they want to give up their young pitchers at the Triple A level. But Boston saying, "You want John Luster? You're gonna yeah. have to give up top flight talent." Dodgers are supposed to be in play. Pittsburgh Pirates are supposed to be in play. And the Cardinals. You know, when I looked at the standings today, Pittsburgh's only a game out. Yep. I, I think the last time I looked at the, uh, they were about seven back. There's a strike as Cervelli was taking his shin guard off. He thought it was low, and I think... Uh, 
Well, it was borderline. Let's put it that way. We're in Texas. That's down near Laredo, as David Cohn would say. It's Fly ball shallow center. Martin comes on to make the play. We talked about Beltre's kid, and we've got video of him, Kenny. Adrian Jr. Now watch the stance is about the same. Watch the follow through on the swing. How great is that? <laughs> Obviously, he's been watching his dad on TV. Not many players go down to the knee like that. Reggie did. Yeah, well. Reggie would do that a few times during the game because he swung so hard. Almonte takes low. They do that in cricket. They go down on a knee. They do that? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be a good cricket player, and I'll tell you why. Because I heard that one team can be in the field all day and don't get they don't get a chance to hit. You know how it is out there just standing in the outfield with nothing to do. <laughs> High fly ball left field. A deucey. Do you I, think you think you could go for that. No no I, I, I I'm sure it's a great game. I've never played it. And I know it's very popular particularly in the Caribbean and you know through the British. Uh, you know, British Kingdom, Commonwealth, and all that sort of thing. But no, I'm not standing out there all day. I was in London during the All Star break. You went to a game? No, I was watching some uh, on TV, and I just didn't understand it. Uh -huh. I just couldn't make heads or tails of it. Well, I'm, I'm sure if some people from England come over here and watch a Major League Baseball game, they they can't go and get it either. I wonder though, Kenny, why Major League Baseball teams don't scout cricket players? Because if you could hit a ball that's bounced up there with spin, yeah, you could probably hit a, a ball that's not bounced up there. Mm -hmm. Count 0 and 2. Ryan hits one right back here and just to the left of our booth. Almost picked off a Hall of Famer Eric. Not uh, Eric's not there right now. <laughs> Maybe you picked him off. Fly ball down the right field line. Makes the seats. I talked to Eric, who was inducted on yeah. on Saturday. Got the Ford Frick Award, which mm -hmm. is the uh, the version of, of an announcer going into the Hall of Fame. You're not quite in the Hall, but he said it was amazing. There's Eric. Yeah, he's on the TV he's side. on the now. TV side, and uh, he said the place is jammed. There's 8,000 people. This is Saturday. Sunday is the, the players and the mm -hmm. managers. He goes, but the most intimidating thing is you're giving your speech and all 50 Hall of Famers are on the stage sitting behind you. He said, so they show up for that. Roger Angel also was enshrined. Amazing. And Eric's a kid from Brooklyn, too. Yeah. And he told a great story that his dad, I guess, was a dentist. And he was listening to Mel Allen. They lived in Brooklyn. He was listening to Mel Allen on the radio. He said, does Mel Allen get paid to do this? And the father goes, yeah. He goes, well, let me get this straight. You have to pull people's teeth for money, and he goes to a ball game and sits in Yankee Stadium? He said, that's what I want to be. High fly ball. Shallow center. Odor is there and puts it away for the final out of a 1-2-3 inning. All right, we're going to the bottom of the fourth here in Texas. Rangers lead this one 3-2.
Smokers Quit Line quiz answer. Call 1 866 NY Quit for free help today. The question Last year, Alex Rios became the last Rangers player to hit for the cycle. Who's the only catcher to accomplish this feat with Texas? The, the obvious answer's got to be Pudge Rodriguez, but it almost is too obvious if you ask me. That's not <laughs> obvious. I <laughs> see. How did Benji get the triple? <laughs> wow. Uh, t- you know, I think he did it at Fenway Park in Boston, if I'm not mistaken. The triple had to be in the triangle, then. Aaron Sebia continues his hot hitting and rips one through the left side for a leadoff single here in the fourth. He did get the uh, cycle at Fenway Park. There's Martin, RBI single left in the first, driving the third run of that inning. That's the difference in the game right now. Count low. And Michael. Lincoln scoreboard, 3 2 Texas. I think you're exactly right when you said if the triple went to the triangle and it was a head first dive into third base. Well, that, that triangle we're talking about, right center field and center field at Fenway, that's where home runs go to die, but triples live. Yeah, 420. In fact, that, I remember getting a triple out in that triangle, and, you know, I was so gassed by the time I got to third base. There's, there's Pudge Rodriguez, who was part of the opening ceremony with Yankee captain Derek Jeter, one of the all-time greatest catchers, Pudge. A few kind of, moment, they yeah. were the, it was it was Pudge, Michael Young, Derek, and the president, and they took a picture. And the president was the president of the Rangers mm-hmm. before he went into politics. And he looked at Pudge Rodriguez's head, who's now shaving his head, and he just mugged it. And they gave <laughs> it a little squeeze on top while they were taking the picture. And he's sitting behind the president. That one's bounced up there. And a strong throw to second base by Cervelli. It came right back to him, but Aaron Sebia is in there. That's a wild pitch, but Cervelli heads up, turned it. That's a uh, concrete wall behind home plate. And this is what Michael's talking about before the game. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Young uh, on the left there, the all time Rangers hit leader. Rangers have had some good hitters over the years, including those two. Martin walks. Remember when uh, when President Bush was one of the owners of the Rangers, there was talk that he would end up being the commissioner of baseball. There's no talk about him replacing Bud, Bud who was uh, going to retire. I believe it's going to be January of next year. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you go from president of the United States to the commissioner of baseball. Yeah. I, guess, I guess Mrs. Bush has some say. Well, you know, it's he's not working right now, is he? No, he's he, eating peanuts. He, yeah, he, I'm, what I'm saying is he, he might want to commissioner of baseball. Of course, that's the you pay's know. a lot better than president of the United States. <laughs> that's bunted and into the seats behind the plate. Yeah, but it is a full-time job. Just like the presidency was, and you know that phone could ring at any time. Some sort of crisis. Maybe not a world crisis, but uh, a, a base world series crisis. Yeah, a baseball world crisis. Chirinos again squaring the ball pitches high. Oh, and just uh, did it go over his head? It looks like he did. It looked like he ducked under. Uh-huh. Severely lucky to stop it. If it did, yeah, over the head. That's a tough pitch to bunt. Pitchers are taught to keep the ball high. Those are the ones that can be popped up. We saw Chirinos pop up the first one attempting to bunt.
That one is bunted to Headley. Covering third is Jeter. The throw. They got him. That's a nice play by Jeter and Headley. Yankees had the wheel play on. Hardly ever works. Well, one reason why they put it on, because you have Aaron Sebi, a former catcher at second. So the feeling is Jeter will be able to beat him at third. You can see he's got a good lead on him. Headley with the excellent throw right on the bag. And the Yankees play this one correctly. Headley didn't hesitate. You know, he is told by the catcher where to go. And he whips it to Jeter at third, and the Yankees get the lead runner. So no sacrifice for Chirinos. Here is Rogned Odor. So far tonight, Kuroda's only had one, one, two, three, and he really had to work hard in the first thing when eight Rangers went to the plate. Two and oh. There's the pitch breakdown. Second and third, just nine pitch innings. But that 33 in the first, as we said, you're going to pay for that later. He's at 62 pitches with one out here in the fourth. Popped up. Infield fly rule is called, and Ryan makes the play. Two outs. Yeah, Michael, we're getting to that time of uh, night that's difficult for the infielders and outfielders to see balls that are popped in the air. It's, it's sort of like dusk, and the ball kind of blends in. Not quite dark enough. And uh, I was watching the outfielders react to that pop up, and it looks as though they saw it, but it seems like to be a five minute window, so to speak, where you just can't find a ball hitting the air. And you. I lost it for a moment there, Kenny. You know what you do? You look at the fielders. They tell yeah, you who's going to make the play. That's what you do. Here's Chu. One and oh. Now, Chu is one for two tonight, but uh, if you look at his numbers. The last few years with Cincinnati, he was one of the best leadoff hitters in the game. On base percentage well over 40%. He's not having that uh, initial season here in Texas like that. Plus, he struck out over 100 times already. Yeah, just looking at the numbers from Chu, he was on base 42% of the time last year. Scored 107 runs for the Cincinnati Reds. Had a year in Cleveland where he was on base 40% of the time. 1-1. One, one. He's got a good batting eye. But sometimes the players with the good batting eyes trust him too much. And he's been called out on strikes more than any other hitter. Rounded to second. Ryan makes the play, and that'll do it here in the fourth. No runs a hit and two men left. Let's take this baby to the fifth. Three two, Texas.
to Texas, and uh, taking over in left field is Daniel Robertson. You see the American League wild card standings right now. The Angels have the first spot by a lot. The Blue Jays are two ahead of the Yankees for the second wild card. And you see the Mariners two and a half back, the Royals three and a half back. The only thing I can think about with Robertson taking over when a Ducey ran into the wall might have hurt himself. No, no, no. Well, not so. Now, he's in right field. I'm now, sorry. Rios is out of the game, and, and maybe when Corota hit him with a pitch in the knee. Now, here's a thought. Uh -huh. When he got hit by a pitch, that could be one of the reasons Rios out. Mm -hmm. oh. And the other one is maybe he's traded. Oh, yeah. I've seen that in the past. So, Ducey is still in left. And I, I can recall the situation. It was a spring training game. And Don Baylor's playing left field. I'm in spring training in Miami with the Orioles. And they take him out of the game. And I don't remember him being out of the game. Uh, being hurt or anything. That so, Bobby Maduro? Yeah. Oh, you know your stuff. Here's uh, Rios getting hit earlier in the game. And zoom, just mm. above the knee. That, that could hurt. That could get you out of a game eventually. You can see he stared back at Corota. Well, anyway, I go into the clubhouse, and there's Don Baylor sitting in the corner of the trainer's room, and he's, he's crying. That one is driven out to left field. Aducey runs it down. And if you know Don Baylor and you know him, he's one of the toughest guys you ever want to meet. So I, I thought, you know, maybe something happened to his family or something. And he said, no, I, I got traded. And remember, to that point, he was a, he'd been an Oriole his whole career. So I said, oh, man, I'm going to miss you. Where are you going? I'm going to Oakland. I said, who do we get? He says, Reggie and Ken Holtzman. Mm. And then I began to think, Reggie plays where I play. <laughs> I'm going to have to move. I, I knew I was going to have to change position. Just for one year, and then Reggie signed with the Yankees. Yeah, I did. Uh, I go back to right. <laughs> Derek Jeter chops one to short. Andrews. Two outs. And the one thing I do remember, Reggie didn't show up till May. He, he wanted more money. He always wanted to give, give it to him. And he showed up in May. And I think by the time he got there, he were seven games behind. But from that point on, he played like a Hall of Famer. He, somebody on his way to the Hall of Fame. Let's put it that way. Two down here in the fifth tier is Jacoby Ellsbury. So I believe we're going to be right on one of those two choices. It's the knee or Rios is playing for another team. The Texas Rangers just take a not so subtle shot at the New York Yankees. With a wave Ooh. warning in the outfield on their scoreboard. Remember the, the game was rained out when. The rain was so torrential, the, the crew couldn't get the the tarp on. So they say up on the scoreboard, with a threat of rain tonight, officials advise no one to attempt to wave. Baseball studies have shown a wave will impede the ability of a grounds crew sometimes as much as 13 minutes to position a tarp. Please, no waves. Wow. Again, not so subtle shot. We're halfway through. Rangers three, Yankees two.
TV. Premium, the number one live streaming sports service on over 400 devices. Visit Yankees.com for details. <laughs> His name is Jeter. Wow. Hey, Jeter. Right back to Corota. As Andrews is retired. Let's go back to the studio where Bob Arantz has another update. Robert? A friend of mine went there and said it was phenomenal uh, to the uh, soccer game in Yankee Stadium to the soccer match. With the bottom of the fifth inning, Rangers three, Yankees two. Here's Alex Rios. And Rios, by the way, is out, so I apologize. That's Daniel Robertson. And we're getting reports that Rios was hurt on the hit by pitch. He has not been traded. Okay. A lot of the Ranger riders are tweeting that out. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Robertson down on strikes. Fans, you can now tweet at Yes Network your best fan photo using hashtag Yes Band Photo for a chance to have it shown during the game. Brought to you by AT&T. Crowd of 49,653 at Yankee Stadium tonight. For the soccer, soccer match, yeah. Huh? Liverpool's playing, right? And Man City. You know, it's big stuff. That one is lined over the head of a leaping Brendan Ryan. So Beltre picks up a hit. It was a, it was a, a mess at our hotel the last two days because Real Madrid is in town. They were playing a friendly at the Cotton Bowl yesterday. Or, yeah, yesterday. And, I mean, it's amazing. Uh, you think the Yankees get a lot of fans. They, they were maniacal outside oh, the hotel. How about the security? Yes. Well, you couldn't have. Uh, well, you had Ronaldo. He's part of Real Madrid. Yeah, so. it was hard to breathe around there. Now, understand, he didn't play in the game. No, he didn't. Now, I think they were announcing that the Cotton Bowl, they had 72,000 people for the soccer, but we mm -hmm. had a source that was there, so it was closer to 55. Yeah, an excellent source, by the way. Line drive to center field, a base hit for Aducey. He's two for three as Beltre moves to second. Well, Corota got the first two outs pretty easily. A ground ball back to him, then a strikeout. But now back to back singles, and the Rangers are th threatening with two down. Aducey, solid line drive to center field. We talked about him in the opening game of the series, 10 years in the minor leagues, and now getting his chance. 74 pitches for Hiroki Kuroda with two outs here in the fifth. And here is what has turned into a dangerous player, J.P. Aaron Sibia. Strike. Aaron Sibia in his career has 40 hits against the Yankees. 12 of them are home runs. After eight innings, Orioles four and the Angels three. Orioles in first place in the AL East. The 0 1. The Yankees have two more series against Baltimore. In fact, the uh, one coming up down at Camden Yards in the middle of August. Then they go back there in the middle of September.
Well, this is one of those starts that Roger Clemens would say he had a grind. Didn't have great stuff, didn't have great command, but made it work. He said he actually enjoyed those starts a lot. I'm not sure Kuroda's enjoying this. He's down 3-2, bottom of the fifth inning, first and second. Two outs, 2-1 two count on Aaron Sebia. Line drive, foul. One thing that Aaron Sibby has been doing lately, he's making a lot more contact. He's basically a hitter that when he's ice cold, a lot of swings and misses, a lot of chasing pitches out of the zone. It seems he's been a little more patient, getting better pitches to hit. He's not swinging and missing as he had been. Count three and two. You know, Aaron Sibia had been, been hot lately. We mentioned the fact that uh, he had been switched from catching to first base. And sometimes when you switch positions, you don't feel comfortable in the field, and that carries over to the plate. Now, maybe with the more experience he's getting at first base, uh, he feels a little bit more comfortable on the field, and it's also showing up in his hitting. Beltre at second, Aducey is at first. Two men out. And the payoff. Runners go. Swing and a miss. Aaron Sibia down on strikes. And that'll do it here in the fifth. No runs to hit, no errors, and two men left on base. We go to the sixth inning here at Globe Life Park. Rangers three, Yankees two. Sunday, August 10th, when the Yankees take on the Indians, the first 25,000 guests in attendance will receive a Yankees cowboy hat, courtesy of Pepsi. For tickets, log on to Yankees.com. Visit the Yankee Stadium ticket window, Yankees clubhouse shops, or call Ticketmaster at 877-469-9849. Mark Teixeira will lead off the sixth inning. And he swings and misses through the Lewis offering. Teixeira walked in the first, struck out in the third. Two teams combined for four runs in the first inning on seven hits. Since then, the four innings that have followed, one run on five hits. So the pitchers have settled down. Then the one run came in the third on the Jacoby Ellsbury home run. It's a final at Camden Yards as the Orioles beat the Angels 4-3. 
So the Yankees have to win to keep pace. The 2 1. Line drive right into the teeth of the shift as Odor makes the play. Another hit stolen by the shift. Playing in short right field, and Odor sinking line drive, and he hauls it in. You can see the three fielders on the uh, right side. And another hit taken away. We talked about it in the opening game. How often do you see Mark Deshera batting left hand hit the ball to third base? I really can't remember. No. So usually it's a mistake. Yeah, yeah. Happens. It's a, you know like off the end of his bat right. check swing. So in that instance, they feel that the left-handed hitter will hit a ball to third baseman seven percent of the time or less. So they move the third baseman over to where. The left-handed hitter is more likely to hit the ball. Now, there's some left-handed hitters that don't do that. Yeah, Jacoby well, Ellsbury, they don't shift at all. Well, because he can butt right. pretty well, yeah. Beltron pops it up to Odor. Makes the play for the second out. Nine in a row retired by Lewis after the single by Beltron in the third. Here's Chase Headley. And a strike. Fly ball, fairly deep left. The Ducey going back, and he'll make the play to retire Headley. And the Yankees go down in order. In fact, 10 Yankees have gone down in a row against Lewis. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Site at the Giants training camp in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Catch exclusive interviews from Big Blue's biggest stars and an in-depth look at the roster battles. Don't miss the Michael K. Show tomorrow at 3, right here on Yes. Don LeBrecker will have Sean O'Hara, former Giant, as his co-host tomorrow. So they'll be really into it. And I'll be live with the show Friday uh, from Fenway. Oh, okay. Back in the saddle, huh? Yep. Here is Leonis Martin. It'll be the bottom third of the order against Hiroki Kuroda. Benjamin Moore scoreboard 3 2 Texas. And there's a strike as Martin shows bunt. So 
See Headley in on the grass at third to share it even with the bag at first. Martinez, very good speed. Ground ball to second. Ryan's playing a very good second base for the first out. Sure hands, great arm. Acrobatic. Enthusiastic. Here's Robinson Chirinos. Now he told you Chirinos has been struggling with the bat. He's three for his last 36, but defensively he's solid. He's thrown out 40% of the runners who attempted to steal. That's tops in the major leagues right now. So he's. Uh, not exactly in there for his bat right now. The 0 2. 1 and 2. And the pitch. 2 2. Torino's grounded to second in the first and then tried to bunt in the fourth. Yankees had the wheel play on. Headley made the play and fired to Jeter, covering at third to get the force. Grounded up the middle and threw for a base hit. Well, what did say? Three for 36. He's one for his last one. Here's Rognet Odor. Another player with good speed, and Headley again is in on the grass. We talked about this the opening game. Teams that might be looking for infield help, they might be knocking on the door of the Texas Rangers this winter. Or off season. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll trade Odor. They mm -hmm. could trade Pro Andrews yeah. and then move Profar to, uh, short. to short. Yeah, a lot depends on how well that shoulder feels for Profar. He's had shoulder surgery. And that, that type of surgery might force him into being a second baseman. Mm -hmm. That one gets away as Chirinos will move to second. That is going to be a wild pitch from Corota. Splitter in the dirt off the heel of the glove of Savelli, who's usually pretty good at keeping the ball in front of him, but this one skirts away to his right. And Chirinos, a catcher, recognizes it, and he's on his way to second. Second wild pitch for Corona. Waved at that one. Kenny, you remember Jack Lazorko? Yeah, I do. He's now the president of the Major League Baseball Players Alumni Association. He was a pitcher, pitched for the Yankees for mm -hmm. a little bit. And his mom is 94 years old, Margaret. She lives in Whiting, New Jersey, and she is watching the game. So Jack said, please tell my mom hello. And we're doing that. All right, Margaret. Enjoy the game. And your son just saved a phone call. <laughs> One, two. That one's blocked by Francisco. Fair Ben. 
getting ready in the Rangers bullpen. Ninety-one pitches for Corota. Can't see him pitching much longer than this inning. And Corota, as you mentioned, Michael has two wild pitches tonight. And uh, I looked up the league leaders in wild pitches, and they all have seem to have the same thing in common. Common. They have very good stuff. You have Garrett Richards, you Darvish, Felix Hernandez, Justin Masterson. Your Don Ventura, these guys all throw hard. And uh, when they get the ball down in the dirt, it is tough for catchers to handle. Odor hanging in there. I think Yankee fans will remember when A.J. Burnett was with the Yankees. He, he was up there in wild pitches. And it's because he threw pretty hard. Breaking ball in the dirt. Hard for candle, uh, catchers to hand. Got him. Big pitch there to get Odor for the second out. Yeah, that was one of the best splitters that he's thrown tonight. Picks up fourth strikeout. Watch this one dive underneath the bat of Odor as he goes to swing at it. Down and out of the strike zone. Very good pitch by Corona. So here's Chu. Only Jeter on the left side of the infield for the Yankees. Three infielders on the right as they. They shift to the lefty batter. 1 0. Looking out of the Yankee bullpen, nobody's really warming up, but they are all standing out there like they're, they're waiting for the phone to ring. And I think it just did. Chase Whitley's up. Gary Tuck answered the phone. There's a strike on 3 0. And there's a there's a shift. There's a Adam Warren gets up. And when you talk about why Girardi has to use his bullpen so much, the Yankees never blow anybody out. Yeah. It's always close games, and you have to grab a win when you could grab a win. They thought they had the blow out yesterday, but it didn't work out because the bullpen wasn't effective. Now to count three and two. They had 12 runs, and it still turned into a one run game. There's a base open. Let's see where he goes here. Splitter or try and just blow it by him. Round it right to Headley. So the shift worked beautifully, taking a base hit away from Chu and getting Corona and the Yankees out of the inning. No runs to hit, no errors, and one man left. Let's go to the seventh. 3 2 Rangers.
the Joe Girardi Show as Joe reflects on any trade deadline deals and recaps the week that was in Texas and Boston. Plus, Joe answers your questions. It's a new Joe Girardi Show. It's Sunday at 730, and it's only on Yes. Yankees down 3-2 as we go to the seventh inning. Cervelli, Almonte, and Ryan against Colby Lewis. Came into the game with a 6.23 ERA. The Cadillac scoreboard shows you the Yankees with two runs on four hits and Texas three runs on nine hits. Colby Lewis came into the game with an ERA of over six. And he's held the Yankees to two runs on four hits. Uh, two of those hits have been home runs. Represent the Yankee runs. Change of speeds. Trying to keep the ball out of the middle of the plate. You know, you never like to not give credit to the pitcher, Kenny. But then you see a stat like this. The Yankees are 4 for 22 tonight against Colby Lewis. Well, opponents this year are hitting 345 against Colby Lewis. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's just so much that you can give credit to the pitcher. The offense is very inconsistent all year. Yesterday, 12 runs, and now struggling against Colby Lewis. Now, we mentioned he's never beaten the Yankees during the regular season, but he beat them twice in the American League Championship Series. Including the clincher. Did not pitch at all last year due to injury. Did he go around? Home plate umpire won't even check with uh, Holberg because he said he went around. Yeah, he called it himself. That's uh, Ed Hickox, the home plate umpire. Third strikeout, Colby Lewis. Yeah, he definitely went around too far. Couldn't check on a high fastball. I should amend that. Lewis did not pitch in the big leagues last year. He was pitching on rehab assignments in the minors. This will be Lewis's 100th pitch. Change of speeds in their first strike. Right back to Lewis. Two down here in the seventh inning. How many rows is that? Is it 12? 3, 6, 9, 12. Yep. There's a, you can see the stitches here. He's kind of doctored those up a bit. There's Brendan Ryan 0 for 2 tonight. You know, I think I read something the other day, Michael, that one third of all major league pitchers, if you've got a 12 man staff, four of the pitchers on the staff have had Tommy John surgery. Wow. So. 0 and 2. Seventh inning, 3 2 Texas. Season high for Lewis, 108 pitches. He's a 104 right now. Line foul. Now, if he gets through this inning, he's already gone further than he's ever gone. Six and two thirds. 
His longest outing uh, was has been six and a third. He's done that uh, twice this year. Has not won in his last seven home starts. Swing and a miss. But that's his last battery. Finishing strong. Returning the last 13 Yankees in a row. Time for the seventh inning stretch in Arlington. Rangers three, Yankees two. And later on the post game show, stick around for that. Let's take a look at the game summary brought to you by your local Nissan dealer. Rangers three runs on nine hits, the Yankees two runs on four. Gardner and Ellsbury, a solo home run apiece. Andrews and RBI double, Beltre and Martin, each with RBI singles, and that's the scoring. The Yankees haven't been able to do anything against Colby Lewis. And that's probably it for Lewis as uh, Mike Maddox. Gives him the chest tap. That's usually an indication, huh? Or that they're standing on the mound. <laughs> but the handshake will, will tip you off. Neil Cotts warming for the Rangers and Adam Warren for the Yankees as Kuroda will deal here in the seventh. Pitch outside to Elvis Andrews. Now Mendez has joined Cots. And David Hoff is up with Warren. Two and two. It's Andrews, Robertson, and Beltre here in the seventh against Corota. Popped up. Brendan Ryan makes the play, has some trouble with it. Let's take a look at the T-Mobile game changer, Kenny. It's going to be uh, Rangers starting pitcher, Colby Lewis, who has gone further in this ball game than he's gone in any game this season. Seven innings he's gone, and it appears he's, uh, his night is done. But he's held the Yankees off the board on two runs, two solo home runs, and that's been it basically for the Yankees in their offense. Robertson. Takes outside.
chop foul outside of third. Kuroda with 107 pitches. His high this year is 109. One and two. You, know, you look at Corona, you look at his stuff, you look at the fact that he pitched for the Dodgers and the Yankees when the Dodgers were pretty good when he was there. The Yankees have been good since he's been here. And his lifetime record is 75 and 76 mm -hmm. with a 3.44 ERA and 200 starts. It doesn't make sense. Well, I think we mentioned a few starts ago that he's thrown the most quality start losses. In the major leagues over the last since he's been in the big leagues, 2008. So that means he's pitched, as they like to say, just well enough to lose the game. Mm -hmm. Served the other way and slicing foul. Now he gave up three runs in the first inning in his last start against Toronto, but it didn't hurt him. The Yankees came back and won. Now tonight he gives up three runs in the first inning and nothing else since then. But it might be just enough to lose this game. And another thing that to note. He doesn't get the run support that some of the other pitchers get. Two away. So with two down in the seven, we go back to the studio and Bob Lorenz. Putting more pressure on them the final two innings to get a couple runs and pull this one out. They're down three to two. While we were away with the update from Bob, Joe Girardi went out to the mound to talk to Corota to ask him if it was okay. It was a quick visit. He said he was okay. A dangerous hitter at the plate in Beltre. He already has two hits tonight and a run batted in. So you get the feeling that Beltre is going to be Corota's last hitter. One way or the other. Gets him out, or if he doesn't. Oh, he was looking to go a yard right there. That swing told him he was looking for something middle in. And Savelli had something to say to him. Grounded to short. Jeter makes the play. And a strong finish for Corota as he retires. The Rangers in order, but the Yankees, the clock is ticking. They're down to six more outs. We go to the eighth. It's 3 2 Texas.
Three nights in Texas for Brett Gardner. The thrilling moments of the game brought to you by Pepsi. He has been outstanding. He will lead off here in the eighth inning. And Ron Washington will make the Verizon call to the bullpen. As Colby Lewis is done and Neil Cotts will come on. The numbers on Cotts will face the top of the Yankee order with two left-handers, Gardner and Ellsbury. A hit per inning. Crota. First inning blues. You know, it bothered both he and Colby Lewis in this game. Lewis faced seven Yankees in the first inning, and uh, Corota faced eight Rangers in the first inning. You know, one of the reasons why Ron Washington goes to Cots here because two of the three scheduled hitters for the Yankees are left handed this inning in Gardner and Ellsbury, but both of them actually hit better against lefties. Outside, two and two. Their batting averages are higher against left handed pitching. Didn't that just remind you of Paul O'Neill? What Ellsbury was doing? Mm. Shadow. Shadowing his swing in the uh, dugout. Gardner goes down on strikes. Paul did that all the time. Oh, yeah, he did. So Ellsbury will come out on deck as Jeter comes to the plate. This could be Derek's final at bat here in Texas. Well, let's see how the crowd reacts. And there's a strike, 46,599 here at Globe Life Park. A road Derek Jeter chant. Right in front of us in our booth, there's about five rows, six rows of seats, and there's at least seven Derek Jeter jerseys. And most of the fans here on their feet. Another road salute. Again, before the game, they gave him a pair of cowboy boots with the NY logo and Jeter on each boot, and they gave him $10,000 for the Turn 2 Foundation, and they surprised him when former President George W. Bush came out after they showed a video of how Jeter teased Bush before Game 3 of 2001 World Series and told Bush, don't throw from front of the mound, throw from the rubber, and don't bounce it because they'll boo you. This is New York. <laughs> Through a perfect strike. To Todd Green. The 1-2. Derek tonight with three ground balls. One back to the mound, one to third, and one to short. One two count, the pitch. A lot of flashes going off on each pitch. Five hits in this series for Derek Gina. And he's 19 for 36 in the last eight games, including this one. Mm.
That one is looped to the right side. Right there is Aaron Sebia for the second out. And the fans give him a nice hand. And this is an awkward thing for Jeter yeah. because they're showing him love and affection and his team is losing. So he's not really, has, he doesn't really have his mind on acknowledging the crowd because his team is down. Well, we all know that he's all about winning. <laughs> and with the team losing, he's just not going to do that. With that out. Kenny, you see a lot of people heading to the exits. It's like they came to see Cheetah's final at bat. Mm -hmm. Still a tight game here. And it might not be his final at bat. It could be extra innings. Yankees could rally. Here's Ellsbury's home run in the third. This replay brought to you by New York Presbyterian, the official hospital of the New York Yankees. Amazing things are happening here. It's 399 feet. And a push punt, but a kicks foul. Now some people might say, why, why are you bunting? You're down by one run. I think his idea is to get to share up at the plate as a switch hitter against Neil Cox. Which isn't such a bad idea. If they're going to give him the bunt, he'll get on. He's a possibility of him stealing second. This chiropractic telecast presented by authority of the New York Yankees. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. And I don't know if uh, I'm pretty sure Ellsbury does not know to share his stats against Neil Cotts. But Teixeira is five for twelve with a home run against him. So maybe that's a, not such a bad idea getting him up here with a man on. But now with two strikes, Ellsbury is going to have to work his way on with a, a swinging hit, you would think, or maybe a walk. Count three and two. And the payoff. Driven the other way. Adusi makes the play for the final out of the eighth as the Yankees go down in order. One, two, three. Ellsbury gave it a ride the other way. And Adusi used up all of the ballpark, make the catch, and leans up against the wall as we go to the bottom of the eighth.
Brought to you in part by the Volkswagen Turbocharged Sales Event. Visit VWDealer.com. By Domino's. Order from Domino's.com today and don't forget to track your order. And by your Tri Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Tri Honda dealer for great deals on the 2014 models. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning here at Globe Life Park, and the Yankees bring in David Huff. So on a night when the bullpen was gassed from last night and a lot of work of late, Kuroda gave them what they needed. He gave them seven innings. And he gave up the three runs in the first inning, but the Yankee offense has not been able to get that back, just two of it. So now they'll call on Huff, one of the well-rested pitchers on the staff, uh, to try to get three outs. Last time Huff pitched was on July 27th, which was Sunday, and he threw six pitches in two-thirds of an inning. Now, if you asked Joe Girardi if he thought Kuroda would give him seven innings in the first inning, I mean, he threw over 30 pitches against the Texas Rangers, had to face eight batters. I bet you what he said, I'm going to have to go to the bullpen much earlier than that. So Kuroda settled down, now turns it over to Huff here in the eighth inning. Jim Medusi will lead off against the lefty Huff. One and oh. Neftali Feliz, the closer, getting ready for the Rangers. And it'll be the middle of the Yankee order to Shara, Beltron, and Headley. There's a ground ball to second. Brendan Ryan, one away here in the eighth. Yankees have tomorrow off, then start a three game set against the Red Sox Friday. The starting pitcher is brought to you by Verizon Fios. Making life more entertaining with America's fastest, most reliable internet. That's powerful. Chris Capuano will go for the Yankees. And right now it's listed as John Lackey for the Red Sox. Coverage begins at 6 on yes. First pitch from Fenway will be right around 7.07. Um, John Lester was skipped over tonight. If he's not traded, the word is that he would start Sunday against the Yankees. So he gets some extra days. So right now it looks like Lackey. Lackey is also rumored. Yeah. to pee on the trade block as well. Two and zero oh on Aaron Sebia. Now three and zero. Oh. This could be uh, somewhat of a pitch around with a left handed hitter coming up next. He's going to be swinging. Aaron Sebia with a walk. And he just said, we're not going to deal with him here in the eighth inning. Well, Friday night after the Yankees Red Sox coverage, take a look back at an extraordinary week on the Yes Network special, Yankees Hope Week Remembered. Relive the heartfelt moments and inspirational stories from this year's series of events. Premiering Friday night at 11, only on Yes. Here is Leonis Martin. Pitch outside. Had a pinch runner at first. It's Adam Rosales taking over Aaron Sibia. He'll play first at the top of the ninth. So they get a little more speed and better defense. Mm -hmm. Former Oakland A. Pretty good move by Huff. Mm -hmm. 
count 2-0. Oh. What's interesting about the Rangers since the All-Star break. They have won the opening game of a series in every series, but they haven't won any other game in the series. Tonight they have a chance to break that if they can hold the lead tonight. Slice the other way foul. So you, you, you win the opening game, you, you feel pretty good about yourself going in. They've always lost the next two or three. And in Yankee Stadium, it was a four game set. They won the first game, and then. You knew they had Darvish in game three. They ended up losing all three. Uh -huh. The 2-1. Two, 2 and 2 on Martin. Two two. As I watch Huff set up on the man when he comes to the stretch, he throws from a closed stance. In other words, his uh, right foot a little closer to first base, so he just lift, lift it up, throw the first, but just throw across his body to home plate. So that makes him tough to steal on. Two two. Grounded to Jeter gets the force one on the first not in time. Well as promised earlier we had the AT&T fan photo of the game tweet your photo to at yes network using hashtag yes fan photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T and this is from Martin fan 74 generation Yankee fans good stuff. Here is Chirinos with two outs in the eighth. There's an example. All he has to do is lift his leg up, throw to first, and same position, lift it up and deliver home. So it's tough for a runner at first base to figure out which way he's going. There's a uh, slightly closed stance. Martin leads off first, two outs, bottom of the eight, three, two Rangers. Torinos fouls at that. It's now one one. Just looking at the managers there, I've been thinking I was thinking about all the injuries and all the disabled use, uh, usage. They haven't picked off. He's safe. Got in ahead of the tag. He's so fast, he never took off as Huff went to first. Yeah, basically, Martin with a guess. He figured he's going to go home with this pitch, and Huff lifts the leg up, goes to first, 
The sheriff steps in to get the angle, but the throw is too far to the shortstop side. And Martin gets in on the second base side of second. And he gets a stolen base. Frustration on the base of Huff. And here it is on Yesmo, brought to you by your Mercedes Benz dealers. Well, maybe not. He went straight into the bag. But you can see the tag is late. That's his 19th stolen base of the year. Lance Barrett with the call. So now a runner in scoring position for Chirinos. 1-1 one, one count. It appears that Feliz is finished warming up in the bullpen. He's not throwing any longer, so he's ready to come into the game. One, two. Grounded foul, still one and two. And Joe trying to push the infielders back. He'd rather have uh, more range. He's talking to Brendan Ryan, I believe, who is trying to hold the runner close. But two outs, the runner's going to be off with the crack of the bat anyway. So you want to lay back a bit, give yourself a little more lateral range on a ball hit to the right side. Nice block. Two and two. The whole idea is not to let the ball get beyond you if, if you can in the infield. Big run after its second base. You want to strand him out there. Runner goes. Popped up right side. Long run for Teixeira, but it'll make the seats out of play. See, Martin figures I got a free base. Ryan's moved back. He's not holding me. And if I'm a Cervelli. And it's going to be a close play. I just let him go. I'm not going to chance to throw to third base. It'll go into the outfield, and they pick up a run that way. I didn't even notice, Kenny. Did, did Headley even go to cover? I don't think he did. Uh -huh. They would have just let him take third. Because he covers, he could lose a ground ball. Yeah, get right through the hole. You don't. Doesn't go this time. Just missed with that pitch. Three and two. Just a little bit too high. The payoff missed outside. And I have to face a much tougher hitter in Rognet Odor. And Girardi is poised to leave the dugout. Still hasn't done it yet. Taking it over. He's got one foot out, one foot in. Yeah, the saving grace is that uh, Odor is a left handed hitter, and that's why Huff is going to stay in the game. And another left handed hitter on deck and Chu. Joe's got his leg wrapped around the fence as if he's ready to go at any moment. You know the lefty-lefty matchup, mm -hmm. but who's your best pitcher in this moment? 
you're having such trouble scoring runs, they can ill afford to give up another and then come back in the ninth. Yeah, he, he, at least at this point, he wants to keep it a one swing of the, one swing of the back and tie the game for the Yankees. In fact, that's the only way the Yankees have scored tonight, two solo home runs. So it looks as though this is up to Huff with a couple left handed hitters coming up. Of course, he'd like to get the first one here, Odor. Tapped in front of the mound. It's a fair ball. And Cervelli tags out Odor, who cannot believe it, thinks it's a foul ball. And Ron Washington will come out and talk things over with Ed Hickox. But that looked like it was caught in fair territory. So it's a ground out, unassisted two. As that'll do it in the eighth. No runs, no hits, no errors, and two men left on base. We go to the ninth. Can the Yankees rally? Teixeira, Beltran, and Headley will try. This game is Bob Lorenz and Jack Curry recap tonight's finale with highlights and analysis. Plus, Meredith Moragovic gets the players' thoughts from the clubhouse. It's all coming up on the WB Mason Yankees post game. It's only on yes. Now the Yankees would like to push that post game at least another half inning as Neftali Feliz comes on. We'll try to close it. When the Yankees were hosting the Rangers in New York, Joaquin Soria was traded. To the Tigers, he was their closer, their former closer, Neftali Feliz, has now taken back that job. And Rosales has taken over at first base after pinch running for Aaron Sebia. Well, and Feliz uh, first came upon the scene for these Texas Rangers. He's one of the hardest throwers in the league. Upper 90s. Tommy John surgery, and they say it takes a little while to bounce back from Tommy John. Even though you're able to pitch, maybe you haven't regained full strength in that arm. And I think for a lot of pitchers, it's a mental thing, too. Will I be able to throw like I used to? So Feliz is only, this is only his 10th game of the year. And when we saw him in New York, Michael, or you saw him, you were doing a game, I was watching the game. He wasn't throwing in nope. the upper 90s. Not close. And the pitch to Teixeira. Is a strike. Can the Yankees pull this out and take this series? After taking three out of four from Texas, they lost two out of three to Toronto. Then they lost on Monday to make it three losses in a row. Came back yesterday. A 12-run outburst, Kenny, but now mm -hmm. 16 Yankees have gone down in a row since the single by Beltron in the third. 
Shift is on. Only one infielder on the left side. As Teixeira goes down on strikes. Well, Feliz used to rely almost on the strictly on velocity. And that time it's location. He elevates a fastball kind of up and in and to share it can't get to it. And it struck out on a 92 mile an hour fastball. That's been about where Feliz has been dialing it up 92 consistently. Here's Carlos Beltran who was two for three tonight. And he pops one up. Andrews on the outfield grass makes the play and the Yankees are down to their final out. This one would be tough to take. Not doing much of anything against Colby Lewis. With a 6.23 ERA, a 345 batting average against it's it's just it's hard to digest if they lose this game. Here's Chase Headley. They had him on the ropes in the first inning. Yep. And the bases loaded, and Cervelli hit into a 6 4 force with uh, two outs. And a strike to Headley. Yankees have Brian McCann on deck to pinch hit for Cervelli. Line drive caught by Rosales, and the Yankees lose the game three to two. That was ticketed into the corner for a double. But Rosales snared it for the final out. The Yankees can only look on in disbelief, Kenny, as they've taken a beating here in Texas, losing two or three to one of the worst teams in baseball. Yeah, and the Rangers came in with the uh, lowest winning percentage in the game. You can see Rosales elevate here. It looked like he had two uh, two elevations. Got up a little too early, hung in the air, and comes down with it. And there is the reaction from Feliz, who picks up the save. Yankees lose the first game, they lose the third game, they lose the series, tomorrow's an off day, and then three games in Boston. We'll be back in just a moment, give you the totals, and then back to the uh, studio.